what is going on guys welcome back to part 12 of the build an instagram map series we're going to pick up exactly where we left off make sure you destroy that like button hit subscribe while you're at it and let's continue on so in the last part we went ahead and uh, started creating these sub views the table view cells for our notifications here so if we go to the notification view controller if you recall we had created these two cells and registered them so we're now going to start creating the model laying out the cells and uh, basically mocking out what the ui is going to look like so once we have real data coming in we'll be simply good to go uh, in terms of rendering it so the first cell that we've got here was the uh, if, like event table view cell and we've got a profile image view in here a label a post button and we didn't do the layout sub views or configure so to configure we're going to want a struct a model and we're also going to want a configure similar model to configure this other uh, notification cell so let's go ahead and create that struct so I'm going to do it right above this view controller. Let's first make this view controller final so nobody can subclass it. And we're going to create a struct and we're going to call this user uh, notification. And there are going to be uh, two things on here. So the first one is going to be uh, type. And this is going to be user notification type. And that's going to be an enum up here that we're going to set up in a second. The next one is going to be text, which is the actual text that's going to display. And let's see, the third property we want in here is the uh, profile picture. And this is going to be a URL to the profile picture of the user uh, that basically emitted the notification. So the two types of notifications we want is a like uh, and a follow. Now there's also associated data that we want uh, with the like and the follow. So basically for the like, we want to know the post that was liked. For the follow, there's actually no data we really care about. Uh, we already know which user uh, followed. So we actually probably, instead of wanting a profile picture in here, we probably want a user object. And I think we have a user object here. And let's go back to this. I think there's a profile picture on this. Looks like there is not. So let's go ahead and actually create a profile picture property on here. We'll call it profile photo, which will be a URL. And coming back to this, basically, uh, we want on the like for uh, somebody to pass in uh, the whoever instantiates one of these, they need to pass in the post that's associated with the like. So that'll be a user post object, which we created back here. And a user post basically has things like the identifier, the type, the thumbnail, all that good stuff. So now what we can say is on both of those cells, we're gonna configure each of these with, instead of a string, our custom model. And we're also going to change the protocol here to pass back that model. And let's see, we're also going to want to create on here a private var of model type optional. And the reason we're going to do that is whenever this configure is called, we're going to retain the model. So let's say model is model. And let's see, so we want to configure this cell so which one is this this is the like event and there is a profile image view there is a label and there is a post button so the first thing we're going to do in here is we're going to switch on model dot type and in the case of a i think it was called like maybe not let's see what model dot type is so model dot type is uh, this guy here. So there is a like and a follow in here. So in this particular cell, which is the like event, we only care about the like version of it. So we're gonna switch on this. So we're gonna say the case of like do something. And the case of follow, we're simply gonna break. We're gonna get that post out of this enum like so. And we're just going to break for now. So this is where we're actually going to configure the button, post button, background image. 
We have a label in here, which we can simply configure by saying label.text equals model.text. And then we also have a profile image view. And we can configure this by saying uh, image, we basically want to use the URL to set the image. So we're going to import in here SD web image, which is the CocoaPod we brought in. And now we can say uh, SD set image with a URL, completion is nil, and the URL is going to be model dot model dot profile picture. So I think we actually renamed this profile picture a bit. So let me come back to this. We actually now call a user. So I think we need to do a command B. So Xcode picks up the changes. So let's comment that out, hit command B. Make sure everything's compiling. And now here we should be able to say user dot profile picture or profile photo rather. So that's how that is gonna work. And on a post, we want to basically get the thumbnail and this is going to be post dot, there should be a thumbnail URL on here, thumbnail image. And we are essentially going to uh, download this as well. So let's see, we'll say post button set background image. And we want to do SD set background image with a URL pass in the thumbnail and the state is normal and completion we can basically just say no like so hit command b and we should be good to go here let's see this is complaining about the thumbnail we can, because we can get rid of that break right there so that's how the configuration will work we already did prepare for reuse now in this cell we just want to lay out our actual uh sub views so there are three things in here, the photo, the text, and the post button. So the photo is easy. So it's called profile image view. So we're gonna say its frame is a CG rect with an XY width and height. We'll say three, three, content view dot height, subtracting six. And we're gonna actually do the same for the width here since we want it to be a uh, proportional size. Now we also want to uh, have this be a circle. So we're going to say the layer dot corner radius is going to be the height over two. Now we want to lay out uh, the post button, which is pretty simple as well. So we're going to say post button dot frame is going to be CG rect with an XY width and height. Uh, we're going to say uh, three, rather this is going to be content view content view dot width and we actually want the size defined prior of this and this is going to be a square uh, let's just make this zero for now and the size of this is going to be basically content view dot height subtracting uh, let's say four so the y we're going to say is two so it has a two point buffer on each and in this case we want to say the x position is content view dot width subtracting the size and then finally, we can do the label, which is pretty simple. So we'll say label.frame is CG rect. The X is going to be the profile uh, image view dot right. The Y is going to be zero. Width is going to be content view. Width subtracting size subtracting profile image view dot width. And we also want to subtract um, six for the padding and let's see what's the last thing we have in here which is the height we'll say that's content view dot height and let me line break this so it looks a little cleaner and let's go ahead and do that and let's see um i'm gonna hit command b let's double check our things are looking correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some mock um, stuff in here. So we're gonna say the labels text is uh, at Joe like your photo. The image view is going to have a uh, image, UI image, and this is gonna be named, I think we have a test image in our assets. And I'm also gonna assign Actually, rather, let me assign this as the background image of this guy. 
So we're going to say button set background image. And this is going to be UI image named. Let me close my antivirus pop up. This will be test. This will be normal. And for the profile photo, we're going to give this a subtle background color so we can actually see it. We'll say the background color here is uh, tertiary system background. And now that this cell is good to go, let's create some mock objects in here. So we're going to want a collection of these model types. So we're going to say private var models is a collection of that type. And here we're going to say fetch notifications. And we are going to implement that as a private function. And for now, we can simply just uh, append in some mock data. So we're going to say for x in 0 to 100, we're going to say let model equals user notification. And we're going to say uh, if x is even, make the type a like. And we're going to have to mock out a post here in a second. Uh, otherwise, use the follow type. The text we're going to say here is, we'll just say hello world. And the user we're going to have to mock out to. So let me create a user object here. Whoops, user. So a user needs a username. We'll say Joe. We'll leave this as an empty string. This should be a tuple of first and last. So we're going to say first is empty, last is empty. Profile photo, we're going to have to bang this out. And I'm just going to use uh, google.com since we're not actually using this data in the mock. We're going to just pass it in. Uh, birth date, we'll say is date. Gender, we'll say is male. And we're going to need user counts. Join date is date. User count. And let's just go ahead and pass in one, one, and one. So that takes care of that. And then what else do we need? We also need to pass in a uh, user post here. So let me create this post. And let's actually create it right up above here so it's a little cleaner. And this is going to have a identifier, photo. We'll say this is a URL. Once again, we're going to use google.com since we're not actually using this. We'll say the same thing for the post URL. Like so. Caption we'll say is nil. Like count uh, we'll say is an empty array. Same thing for comments. Created date will be now. Tagged users will be empty as well. So if you hit Command B, let's see what it's complaining about. So URL here needs to be forced unwrapped. Let's see, and what else is this complaining about? So now that we have created this model here, we want to say models dot append model. Now in our table view rows, in all of this stuff, we're going to say uh, models dot count for number of rows. Here we're going to actually get the model. So we're going to say model is models dot uh, index path dot row in here. We're going to basically now switch on the model. So we're going to say switch on model dot type. And in the case of like, we can simply ignore that. We want the like cell. And in the case of follow, we want the follow cell. And this is pretty simple. We're just going to move that code in here. And we're going to say this is table view. We want to DQ a cell. And this is going to be notification like event table view cell dot identifier as that type of cell. We can say cell dot configure and pass in the model like so. Similarly, for this guy, for the follow one, we're going to comment this out since we haven't uh, added that code there yet. But we want to change this to be a follow event table view cell and cast it as well. Hit Command B. And let's see. Hit Command R. Let's see what we've got. 
send notifications and okay, so making progress. So we've got our uh, actual profile picture here. We've got hello worlds and it looks like our post button is not showing up. The reason our post button is not showing up is when we call the configure function down here, it's trying to load an image from uh, google.com. So what I'm gonna do in here is we're gonna go ahead and say um, guard, uh, guard model dot. So we're gonna say if it's actually a like kind, we're gonna say this is the thumbnail on the posts that we're requesting. And we're gonna say guard thumbnail dot absolute string does not equal or let's say rather does not contain google.com. Otherwise we're gonna return so we don't actually use it. So this is just for debug purposes. Go ahead and hit command R and uh, let's double check that it's all looking good. We should see an image there now, beautiful. So we see our image here now. So one thing off the bat, which I think is weird, um, and the other thing I'll call out is basically the reason we have uh, each other cell empty is because this is the follow cell and we haven't designed that yet. So one thing that we need to adjust is the height of each of these. Uh, I think we need to move the label over a little bit. And uh, I think we also should probably move the image view to the left a little bit. So let's see, the label here, we're saying the X is the right of the profile image. Let's add five here. And from this, we can subtract another five, making that 11. And then the size of the post button is the height subtracting four. We're gonna say the X of this is the width subtracting five subtracting size, which means we also now have to subtract another five here. Hit Command R and let's see what that looks like. We still need to adjust the height. So, okay, we move this over, we move this guy over. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to the notification view controller. And we want to, whoops, uh, we want to basically set the height. So in here, go find where you conform to the table view delegate. Look like, looks like it's up here. And we're gonna implement height for row at index path. And let's try 84, some random number I think is gonna look all right. All right, oh, that's way too big. Okay, let's try 52. So you have to play with these numbers a little bit and make sure uh, it looks kind of how you expect it to. So I would say that's looking a little better. So cool. Um, let's do the other follow cell and let's see what all of it kind of looks like together. So we went ahead and did the like cell and I am going to actually copy and paste some code from there to the follow cell. The important one, um, actually before we even wrap up this cell, one thing we forgot to do is we wanna add a target for when this post button is tapped on. So in here, we're gonna say post button, add target self, and this is going to be, get rid of these line breaks here. Uh, this is going to be selector did tap post button. And the event is going to be touch up inside. Go ahead and create this function right below. And now we need to, we're gonna basically guard if our model is not nil because we set the model on this class in the configure function because we say self.model is model. And if it's not nil, we can use the delegate and say did tap follow unfollow button. Let's see, this is a like event. So this should be, we actually wanna change this to be the uh, like event table view delegate. And this should now be delegate did tap uh, related post button and pass in the model like that. Hit command B. And actually on our view controller back here for this cell in the cell for row, we wanna actually assign the delegate. So we're gonna say the delegate is self. It's gonna give us an error because we're not conforming. Let's uh, add it as an extension because our class is getting kind of large. So we're gonna extend the notifications view controller and we're gonna have it conform to our cell delegate. 
And basically we're gonna put this in here. So I'm simply gonna print out tapped post. So we should open the post when the user taps this. And then we're also gonna want to um, conform to the other cells protocol. So I'll just do that now that we're in here already. That's gonna be notification follow event cell delegates. And I think this is did tap follow unfollow button. And we're gonna say that. And we are going to basically say perform database update like so. Now here uh, for this cell, we wanna also set its delegate. This is the follow cell like that, it's beautiful. And we're gonna uncomment this uh, cell.configure. You'll see that it's gonna give you an error because this function doesn't exist yet on that cell. So let's go back to the like cell and we're gonna simply copy and paste that configure function. So let's see, so let's go ahead and find it. So it's right here. Let's grab this guy and go to the follow variant of it. And what do we wanna do? So we're gonna replace this right there. We can go ahead and actually delete this like stuff since this is the follow cell and simply put a break here, change this to be an underscore Label.txt and the photo image view is the exact same. The only thing that's different here is we're gonna want to configure button in here. And what else do we want to do? We wanna update the delegate model to be a uh, user notification model. So user, no user notification like that. We're gonna add that private model property on here as well, like so. In the configure function, we assign it. We're gonna to wanna to do this layout subviews and I'm gonna copy and paste from the other class in a second. We're also gonna set a background color to this image view, similar to what we did in the other one. And I believe we set this to be tertiary system background, tertiary system background. And this label, we're gonna set some mock text on it. We'll say at Kanye West followed you. I think it started following you is what actually Instagram calls it. So we're gonna use that. Started following you. And we wanna add a action to this button. So we're gonna say button add, I think we called it post button actually, uh, rather follow button. Add target self selector is did tap follow button. Touch up inside for the event. And then let's go ahead and create this function right down below. And this is gonna be did tap follow button. And let's see in here, we are basically gonna say guard let model equals model return otherwise, and we can now use the delegate to say, did tap follow unfollow button and pass in the model. Looks like it's complaining here. Let's just put a break in here for now. Hit command B and things should be compiling. Looks like we've got some errors somewhere. So none in here. Let's go back to this and let's see what we've got going on. So here it's complaining because this should be the user notification type. Hit command B. Looks like we have a warning here. We can ignore the warning for now. Uh, and let's go back to the like cell and we're gonna copy and paste our layout subview code. And that's the follow cell. So let's go into here and let's copy and paste this. We're gonna have to tweak it a little bit, uh, which is fine because we have a follow button in here. So go ahead and paste that there. The profile image view stuff is good. Now this post button is going to be a follow button. And go ahead and hit command B, hit command R, and let's see what we're working with. Okay, so we have uh, hello world for all of these, which is in fact not what we want. So in our notification view controller, just comment out the configure call for the follow cell and that way it'll just use our default um, properties that we set in there to test. So now we see uh, Kanye West started following you 
And uh, we want a follow or unfollow button here based on uh, some properties. So let's see. What we actually want to adjust now is we have follow here, but on the notification, we actually want to figure out if the current user that's viewing is already following the person back. So I actually think we do need to uh, pass in some data here. So we're going to actually go ahead and pass in uh, state. And I believe we have a following follow state rather object. I think this is an enum if we click into it. It is uh, either following or not following. So let me just add some comments. Indicates the current user is following the other user. And then this one down here indicates the current user is not following the other user. Now, if you hit a, a command B, you're gonna have a bunch of errors because we just changed this up. Let's go to our errors and let's take care of these. So first and foremost here uh, in the follow, we wanna pass in the, what is it called? State, I believe we called it. And it's going to be either following or not following. So I'm gonna make this not following. Hit command B, you'll see some more issues or maybe not actually. So let's see. Um, now in our following cell, let's come back in here. And what we can do is in this guy, we can actually get the state. And based on the state, we're gonna configure the button. So we're gonna switch on the state. And in the following case, uh, show un follow button and in the not following state show follow button so these are pretty simple we're going to say the follow uh, button in this case we're going to say set title is unfollow for normal and we're also going to say set title color is going to be label and this is also normal. And we also want to set a border in this case. So we're going to say follow button, uh, layer, border width is one. Follow button, layer, border, color is going to be secondary, rather UI color dot secondary label dot CG color. And let's go ahead and copy and paste this. In this case, we want to show the follow button. And this one's a little simpler. This one's going to be just follow. Uh, title color we'll say is white. We don't want any border, so we can get rid of that. Actually, let's just make the border width zero to be safe about it. And we want to set a background color. So we're going to say the background color, uh, follow button, dot background color here is going to be, I think we use link elsewhere, so we'll go with that. And let's also change the text here to say Kanye West uh, followed you, command R. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, cool. So we're not seeing the actual button, so something's a little off somewhere. So we're definitely adding it as a sub view and Let's see, follow button. We should be showing it right here. So let me actually set a background color to this and let's see if we can actually get that to show up. I'm gonna say it's orange. So it's nice and obnoxious so we can see it. Okay, so it's definitely showing up, but it is a square. So what we wanna do first and foremost here is we want to change up the width and the X. Uh, we're also going to want to change up the height. So the height we're going to say is a static 44. So the Y is going to be content view dot height subtracting 44 over two. So it's vertically centered. And the width is going to be, uh, I guess a static hundred. Let's start with that for now. And we'll say that size is also here a uh, hundred. And let's actually change this to be size. Go ahead and hit Command R. And let's see, we actually have some errors here. Let's see what these errors are. Content view dot width, content view dot height. This should be a CG float, just so it's aware instead of inferring it as an integer. 
hit Command R. And okay, cool. So we're showing up the button. Um, I think we stopped calling that configure function. So what we're going to do here is um, we are going to call it in a debug capacity. So I'm going to move this code uh, and I'm going to say configure for follow. And we're going to make this a function. Configure for follow. And we're going to paste that right there. We should do the other one, but I'm going to be lazy for a second. And in the initializer, I'm going to call this function. Go ahead and hit Command B. Hit Command R. And now that button should be configured for the follow state. So cool. Um, now we are showing the unfollow button since we are presumably already following the user. Let me get rid of this orange background. And I think the height looks a little tall. So let's get rid of that. And let's make the height of this. Let's call this button height so we don't have to change it in two places. And we can also put button height here. And here we can say button height is a CG float. And let's try 40 and hit Command R. And this video is just about at time, so I'll we'll probably wrap up soon. So, okay, cool, looking good. Uh, our border on this should probably be a little rounded. So let me do that and then we will wrap it up. So it looks like down here, these are all empty. So that's kind of strange. Uh, actually, what's happening is in prepare for reuse, we are nilling everything out. So uh, as we go and scroll, because we're not calling the configure function, uh, everything is being reset, which is actually what we expect to happen. So let me just add a border to our button. And let's see where that button went right here. We're gonna say button dot layer corner radius is going to be, let's say four, and we'll say button layer uh, masks to bounds is true. Hit that run button and let's see what that looks like. All right, looking good. So we've got our unfollow button. Tapping it right now, we're simply doing nothing, it appears. Uh, we actually don't want any selected state when we tap on these table view cells. So for each of these in the initializer, you can actually say selection style is none. Let's do that in the other one as well so it doesn't look god awfully ugly. Um, and let's actually put that in here as well. And let's see what else is going on. So hit Command R. The reason we're not seeing our print statements down here when we tap on the button is because if you recall in the notification view controller, we commented out that configure. So uh, here, if we come here and let's say we tap on a post, we can see we're getting the printout uh, in, from the view controller, but for the follow button, we're not, or unfollow button in this case. And the reasoning is, is because we commented out that configure, so it never actually sets the model. So this is how we are going to basically uh, render our notifications once we get it from Firebase. Uh, I think the next video will probably work on search a little bit, then the feed, then the camera, and then we're going to hook everything up to our data layer. So that said, if you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure to do so. Hit subscribe while you're at it. Leave any questions, errors, comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in part 13.